Hey everyone, this is Austin Schur here with We Write About Music, and today I am back on again with one of my favorites, Wildcat Hawkins. He's got an all-new record out. It is called Multiple Rabbits, Multiple Hats. It's been leading up to this big moment, and I'm super excited to talk to you all about it. How are you? What's going on? Tell me, give me the update. What's happening? Oh man, Austin, my, my life feels very full these days. I, that makes me so happy to hear you have no idea <laughs> truly true i'm not joking man what's what's been going on why do you feel that way it feels full because my schedule that's the thing uh there were so many years austin where it was customary for me to have a full-time job doing some kind of like menial task uh fancy people would think of it that way uh <laughs> the, the the crowd out in greenwich village probably thinks of it that way and i don't bear any grudge against them I'm uh, one of the bohemian ones that's kind of like making my own music in a world that's right. blue collar, in a world that's blue collar. So that's my life. I wish I could be out there with the strokes in Brooklyn is how I used to look at it. But I, was I feel the, the same. <laughs> I feel the exact same. Do you find that in your line of work, you find other creatives or other artists? Uh, you know, what's funny is that uh, the people at my job they think that i'm going to be able to sell my music someday and it's going to start making me money and take me away from the plant that i work in is what they think but mm -hmm. that's what i'm i'm hoping because i think that a lot of what i make is got a, a mood to it and when totally. you've got a mood that works for movies and tv shows and content like that i feel like half the battle sometimes is having people out there whether they're family or friends that actually believe in you and listen to you and care what you're doing instead of just making it a passive thing. The amazing thing about that, Austin, is, uh, and that ties into my life story as I've shared it with you. I told you off camera and the people at home didn't know this, but I told you from the get go when I showed up for a point of light, I said, it's kind of a matter of trust to me because of this media and everyone's wondering and asking who might be in a club with a bunch of sellouts is what people keep saying. And what right. I what I decided to do was tell you which club I was affiliated with. Yeah. Because I am a Freemason. So my Masonic brothers understand me pretty well, I'd say. And I love the crap out of them. But uh, right, absolutely. The thing is, the thing is uh, a lot of artists do sometimes when you make music, it's kind of like, if you wish, you can point to it and say, hey, I, I did this thing. There's a label on it called Wildcat Hawkins. That's just my name, right? So my real name is Matt Keg, but uh, that's spelled K-E-I-G. So it looks like Keeg, I would say, phonetically. And uh, it's not a very well heard of name. So uh, I don't want to use it to be uh, ask people to learn a new name to remember me by. So I prefer to have a stage name. Totally. And I got to be honest with you, the stage name is extremely memorable. Not that, you know, your nor your real name isn't, but I have a hard time forgetting Wildcat Hawkins because it kind of just rolls off the tongue and it's fun. Um, so then let's get into that before we get into the record. You mentioned there's a story behind your name. What sort of sparked it? How did you come up with that? Yeah, so uh, one night I was performing at the Mousetrap Tavern in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. It's a place that I used to play at a lot of the open mic on Sunday nights. Sure. And it'd be the dead of winter in Wisconsin, and there'd just be a like a skeleton crew of regulars there having a few beers and playing. And I said, I'd like to use a stage name and see how this goes. There was uh, just a kind of uh, intuition came over me, and I said, well, Kit Hawkins, it'll be. I used to wear around a Jamal Mashburn jersey when I was a fourth grader. Nice. I didn't really like being in Minnesota. I thought that yeah. uh, Kentucky was cooler, and I thought it was a downgrade when we came up to Minnesota, but mm -hmm. I love Minnesota. It's just how I felt at the time. I love it, man. You felt it, the name stuck, and here you are all these years later going by it. That's such a cool thing. Well, of all of the amazing things that... Uh, inspire me whether it's x-men figurines or frank miller content or uh anything like that or if it's even any type of far side comics i even like that but uh really calvin and Hobbes is something that resonates with me interesting because yeah because uh it's no one's fault at all but uh when a when a dad is a doctor sometimes a middle child like me could be kind of unsupervised sure is what ended up happening in my life so 
that was how I developed this pattern of a lot of magical thinking, actually. Yeah. And I believed that I was involved with witchcraft when I was a boy. And I placed Texas on basketball players when I was in about fourth grade. I thought it was real anyway. But yeah, Calvin that's and Hobbes, completely understandable. You know, Calvin was an unsupervised child that was an only child, kind of. So True. Hobbes was what he imagined. Right. But uh, Spaceman Spiff was like a whole other level. He could become Spaceman Spiff sometimes. I love that, man. And so it's kind of like your alter ego. For me, because of my personality type, INFP, this is a notorious mm -hmm. personality type. For okay. One of the things you, you find with us INFPs is that uh, it's not too tough to be a performer, but to start talking yeah. about myself. Remember, Austin, I was the one that was overly unassuming. So unassuming yeah. that I just didn't even introduce myself at all. Yeah. Listen, it happens. You know, we get in our heads and we get caught up in things, but you grow and you evolve. And that's clearly what's happened here. When it comes to some of these post-rock artists, that's the type of vibe I resonate with. I love how it's nonverbal. Yeah, no, really. They speak the language with their music and it's filled with such emotion. I mean, you're not making post-rock music, but the music that you make, you know, people know some of it's instrumental and yeah, you have music with words, but sometimes the ones that don't have words speak the loudest just based on the emotions that you're putting out there. I agree with that, Austin. And uh, what you find with these post-rock bros is it's some chill bros. So they're kind of like me. Uh, my vibe is kind of like an engineer, actually. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of my fans are engineers and architects right. and stuff. I think that I am mildly autistic, but I'm not certain about it. It, it I don't yeah. like sarcasm very much. It doesn't like make sense to me, kind of. But yeah, no, that's I reasonable. I get it. But it's just part of it. It's it's part of the fact that I didn't like the idea that I could attach a personality to a sound because it would create connotations. And people would read into things that I didn't True. think anything was meant to be read into. Yeah, I get That's that. That's why so, I've been avoiding music videos up until now. Right. And so, yeah, so is that something that you're working on? I'm going to create a dance video when I create a dance track. Nice. Okay, okay. So, again, I still want to get into the record, but a dance track, that seems sort of outside of your realm. A little bit, a little bit. Well... When you think of my vocals, uh, a song like Silent Partner displays a type of vocal kind of uh, aesthetic that could sound very good on a, on a nice beat, I think. That is very true. And listen, man, and I say this a million times, you're an artist that it is your right to explore and experiment and try new things. You want to make the music that makes you happy. And it's also, you know, ca casting a wide net to see what other people might enjoy. Absolutely. Um, the crazy thing is, uh, I love this idea of not placing labels on things. Like, for sure. instance, I'm interested in, uh, I had a, a sound arts instructor at community college I went to, and he said he was part of a group where they test audio equipment and they do blind tests. Sure, sure. So they would run the expensive monster cables, uh, run the audio through that and see how yeah. it sounds. And then they'd run it through a wire coat hanger and see how that sounds. And sometimes they couldn't <laughs> tell the difference. <laughs> That's pretty cool, actually. Um, I want to I wanna pivot here and I want to talk about this record because over the last few months, like we've been alluding to it, there's been certain singles that have come out, but now the full thing is here for people to enjoy. How does the single, how do, how do single releases compare to the full album coming out? Like, is it a different feeling for you as an artist to release a whole body of work? In this case, it definitely is because it was meant to be a mix that had a vibe to it beginning to end. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically the story was I had some songs in the can. And I was thinking the name of that album would be Silent Sentinels. So I one of the tracks is goes by that name. It's one of the first half that I created. Sure. I needed to finish that batch of songs. So I went to my mom and dad's house where the piano that I record with is that sounds very good. It's a Kawhi Grand piano. I think it sounds good. But uh. Basically, that was the day I said, I think I can finish the album in about two and a half hours. And I did, in fact. That's wild. That's wild, man. Um, and yeah, the full thing is out. Like, do you feel a bit of a sense of relief that like, you know, this piece of work that you've been working on is finally out in the world for people to enjoy? Like, how does it feel 
emotionally. Uh, I feel validated by this work because it's kind of like uh, people could have wondered if 33 keys, I got lucky on that. But this is about the same quality, I'd say. Sure. I mean, they're different in nature, but at the same time, like, again, you know, it's instrumentals, there's vocal tracks, it's a nice even mix. But one thing that I like about it the most is that you do kind of keep a very specific theme and like the songs don't deviate too much to where it actually feels like a cohesive record. Like you can listen to it from start to finish and it doesn't go all over the place. It sort of keeps to what it is, which I think is very special and difficult to make. I'm glad you think so. I that, that was what I noticed with this album was that yeah. it was like uh, this was an album with a purpose for me because I'm going through some phases of my own healing as a person yeah. and and I made this music while I was doing that. So uh, it, it all spoke to my own journey that I'm on as a person. So totally, I, I think it's something that other people can connect with and identify with this idea that music can pull something out of my subconscious and uh, can have a restorative effect simply by making me feel more calm when I listen to it. Exactly. Yeah. You know what? Make the music you want to listen to. Um, and over our time speaking, like you always surprise me with your stories. Like there's always a story that goes with the song or something spiritual or something like that. Do you have anything to share in terms of the release of this record? Like has anything happened? Well, when it comes to that session, I told you guys about one intriguing thing is this. Uh, I didn't know it at the time, but my intuition was just kind of biting at me saying, hey, go finish that album. Come on, yeah. take it serious. Take it seriously. You should choose to believe that you'll finish it. Sure. And I chose to believe I'd finish it. And I did. But uh, my mother had a piano tuner come tune that piano, which would have totally botched the project. What uh, do you mean? Because oh, because it was slightly out of tune? The piano is about one eighth of a tone below the normal pitch on the first half of song, the right. songs I had completed. So it had the same sound as 33 keys. Yeah. And uh, that I, it wouldn't have been able to complete it at all if it so, had been brought to a standard tuning. So what did you say? Mom, like, tell the tuner to go away? Like, what happened? I told her not to bring that tuner in, but the <laughs> tuner awesome. came in without without my knowledge. Really? But it, it didn't matter because that was when I, I was done with the record. By then. That's perfect. When it comes to this this one, uh, it's the third to last track called Healing Dragon. Okay. That was an intriguing piece of music. I was seeing this girl for a little while and she, she heard that song. She said, when did you start playing the piano? What? And I said, uh, oh, geez, I think she assumes I must have come out of the womb with the piano in my hand like John Henry. I said, I started fooling around with it when i was about 17 she said what? sure and i said oh I, okay I, I don't even always play it i take years of a time off and stuff and forget yeah I, could even, I forgot i was even good at it i guess then i remembered but totally uh, she, reasonable she, she said to me, but what she didn't know was this i recorded that one and it wasn't meant to be anything special but uh i had been counseled that i should trust my intuition and completely surrender and let go to my improvisation yeah. And I tried it. I was not paying attention whatsoever when I recorded that. It was so odd. Like a power came upon me is what it seemed to me. And that's why I called it a healing dragon. Because whatever it was, if it was real, it seemed like a dragon to me. I love that, man. There's a real deep spirituality about your music that I think people will obviously hear, but also the making of it, which makes it even more special. Um, and for anyone out there that hasn't listened yet, the record... It is 13 songs. It comes in just shy under 45 minutes. And of course, I would recommend for people to listen to it from start to finish. But I do want to hear from you. Are there a selection of songs that you think are the most maybe important or pivotal to the album experience that people should, you know, definitely check out? Yes, um, you got to listen to Handshake Deal is what I would say. Mm -hmm. Because the thing about Handshake Deal is I improvised that song like a freestyle rap and also everything I did on the chords. I kind of came up with a couple of chords. I said, that sounds good. Let's give it a go. Yep. And I hit record and out came a song that had lyrics that made some sense, surprisingly. <laughs> and then look, it's one of the highlights of the record. I'm also 
personally partial to Perfect Saints. You know, I know that we've talked about that one in the past. I really enjoy that song. And I think it's the longest on the yeah. record at just under six minutes. Um, but that one I enjoy because it has time to breathe and become something. There's a lot of shorter songs on the record, some around like a minute, minute and a half, which never a bad thing. You know, you never want to extend an improv to the point where it's too repetitive. But yeah, I also really like Perfect Saints. I think it is great right in the middle of the record, kind of just, you know, takes you over to the hump to the back half, which is always a nice thing. I kind of think Perfect Saints is kind of the best thing on here, kind of. But I okay. think that, well, just in terms of like the flavor is just, dang, is that smooth? Sure. But I just think that Handshake Deal is more substantial in terms of offering more and that's how I look at it. It's more of an intriguing project in my eyes, but uh, sure. but we don't rank it. It's not a fight. And the no, 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 thing no, about no. The absolutely you know, not. Not a fight. No ranks. It's just what you think people might like, and that's okay. Interesting thing about the short pieces is that they were meant to kind of like complement and be like a little chunk, kind of like I look at sure. it almost like a novella where some of the chapters are very short if it's like something, you know, like that. Yeah. I like it. I never thought about it as a novella, but that's a great way to put it, to be totally honest. Um, I wanted to mention one thing. Uh, please, Bill and, yeah. Ted's, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure uh, is an excellent movie, and that was the first time I ever noticed that I had a favorite movie in my life. It was Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Great movie. Are they, I mean, did they release, like, the updated version of it? Did that come out, like, a couple years ago or something? I'd heard that they'd made some noise yeah. around the movie a couple of years ago. Don't know if it happened or not, but the the original is a classic, of course. The only thing I gotta say before I forget this is the following though, Austin. Just to go back, uh please as far as this song Healing Dragon goes. Yes. Now now I recorded that song right after I got actually diagnosed with Tourette syndrome. Oh, so, so this one's been around for a little bit. Yeah, it's like a year and a half old. So uh basically that uh i went on to a pill called risperdone which is an sure. antipsychotic type of pill that can help people sometimes but uh that pill makes people start weeping sometimes and that's oh. indeed what happened on that track when you heard me start crying as yeah. i'm playing i just kept playing because i was enjoying the sound of it and i wanted yeah. to keep going yeah man so that's there's, what happened there's some there. interesting I went off medication out there I went off that medication because it was uh, giving me akathisia. So like, that's a creepy thing that it can do sometimes. So mm -hmm. uh, either way, um, it was something real weird, I thought. And it was some, it, it was so odd how I told you that it seemed like a spiritual moment to me. Yet I was also interacting with an antipsychotic drug. Yeah. And I, and the other thing that I swear to God, the Rett syndrome is a spiritual thing or something. I, I swear to you, it seems, I don't know if I'm imagining it or not. Sometimes my head jerks and stuff, but uh, okay. um, I think there's, and sometimes it feels like there's a demon inside. And uh, my, yeah, my ex, my ex-wife told me that I, when I was eating, it seemed as if I was a feral animal. And and then I, that's not a, that's she not told a nice me that thing multiple, she told me that multiple times. And then later I come to find out that that's expected with somebody that has really medication. it is. Yeah. Interesting. And that was that before you got diagnosed? Oh yeah. It was okay. Uh, okay. something that I've been doing my whole life. People criticize how I eat sometimes. Sure. Yeah. That's but kind of a weird thing to thing. say. I, yeah. It was just, I felt that this music was all just a response to the power flowing through my body that sure. affect my emotions because the thoughts are upstream of the nervous system which is upstream of my body yeah whether you have a nervous system condition or not that's how it is um yeah man the body is complicated to say the least but you know it sounds like you're in a much better place these days you know i know it's been a journey for you and the music has certainly helped which, which is such a great thing and i hope that when people listen to your music, you know, it helps them too in any way it can, even if it, you know, it always has that calming effect. My trainer, Maria, showed some of my music to her son, who is a 29 year old yeah. dude who is a chill bro. Yeah. And he, he works out a lot and stuff. And he said, it's making me feel calm when I listen to this. Nice. Dude, that's the goal right there. It's the word of mouth exchange. 
um you know we are we're very close to the end of the year here and i always ask you because i always know but you know what's the plan like can we expect anything else by the end of this year or are you going to kick off 2024 strong uh i'm gonna share this album called gotham hellscape on thanksgiving amazing <laughs> amazing is, i'm not even surprised the thing with this one that i like so much about it that makes it kind of in a way better and it's just it packs a punch because sure. it's cohesive yeah because it's all instrumental and nothing else okay and it also includes themes so one of the early tracks is called spirit in shadows parentheses a ninja's heart okay and then later on you will hear way of the ninja and those Not sound out. it's like different takes on the yeah. same melody kind of okay well obviously i'm looking forward to hearing it <laughs> Because it sounds like you've switched it up a bit. Was this created on the tuned piano? It was. So okay, okay. Fit in with first contact will be the last song. Nice. I have a song called First Contact that has singing in it. That'll cool. actually be like an end credits. I imagine a movie being made. I'd love to see it get made for real someday. Nice man. Yeah, you need to get into the syncing. You know. If I was Warner Brothers, I'd look at a dude like me and say. It's impossible to miss the value with Wildcat, but I wouldn't want another Ezra situation on our hands with Wildcat, no. how he is. <laughs> I understand. And then they'd probably also think to themselves, I'm guessing they'd say, it'll be just like The Rock. It could become adversarial with Hawkins yeah. too. You never so know, they, man. What I think they should do is just, I don't, they should just keep their eye on me and see if I'm on, on my, you know, cross my heart, hope that I good boy behavior. I fully maybe agree. We can do something cool. I agree, man. The music speaks volumes. Um, before we wrap up here, are there any other, you know, parting words you'd like to say about this record before people listen to it? Uh, the magic that I'm up to my eyeballs in with Scottish Rite Freemasonry is actually got a K on the end of it, is what I want okay. to hear. And uh, the thing about it is it's the type of knowledge found in Scottish Rite Freemasonry is actually found in the Kabbalah. Okay. What I can share with you, I, I can share some things. And uh, sure. the other thing I wanted to say is that uh, I uh, just, I, I believe in using my intuition. Sometimes it leads me astray. Perhaps it could, but sure. there have been plenty of times when it just didn't seem like a coincidence is all I'm going to say about that throughout my life. So people have been saying that I have some type of gift but it doesn't matter to me whether it's real or not, because if the music delivers, we won't know one way or another, I don't think. Exactly. People consume music in all different ways and, you know, interpret it in all different ways. That's all that matters. But the other, the last thing is this. I've never pulled a rabbit out of a hat before. I think that type of stage magic is cool. It is. But it's more of just a, a, ref, a nifty reference for me. Of course. Of course. Um. Listen, I think those are fantastic parting words. And if you'll do me the honor of plugging your record one more time here, I would love to do so. If you missed it, Absolutely. I am speaking with Wildcat Hawkins here. The record is called Multiple Rabbits, Multiple Haps. It is live. It is streaming. We will have the links and articles that you can listen and share and follow along. And as always, I'm looking forward to more. There's a new record coming out on Thanksgiving, and I'm excited for it, to say the least. That's fantastic, Austin. Uh, I can't wait to get back and talk about this album with you guys. I'm looking forward it. to it. Amazing. You are very welcome. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day, and I hope to speak soon. Absolutely. See you awesome. around, bro. All right. Bye-bye.